I've trained people from zero hours to private pilot in under 30 days. Wow. Under 30 days, that is one extreme. And I've trained people who just quit. <laughs> My name is Tomas Martinez and I'm a flight instructor at the Sling Flying Club. So one of the first things that we do um, when we're teaching our students is how to use a checklist. So we use a checklist for every phase of flight. So one of the first things I teach the students to do is to pre-flight the airplane. And we do it with the checklist. Uh, it's very methodic. The uh, checklist is in order. So here's the pre-flight. And after we uh, complete the pre-flight, like checking the oil, checking the fuel, checking the quality of fuel, quantity of fuel, uh, and other uh, things, uh, we go into the interior checklist. All right. And when the interior uh, checklist is done, um, then we go to the engine start uh, checklist. And if you can see, the engine uh, start checklist has fuel, throttle, fuel pumps. Um, just like you see in the movies, it's a systematic uh, way of uh, starting uh, the engine to make sure that we don't forget anything and to make sure that we're doing things in the proper order and sequence. I'm your student, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the first day I'm here, I want you to sort of take me through what the process is typically like. We talked to Wayne mm -hmm. and he says that Typically, students will be here every day. Okay, so the first couple of lessons are, are going to be pretty much the same. Okay. So we're going to pre-flight the airplane, and it takes usually uh, about three or four times of me going around with the student and helping them to pre-flight the airplane in order, for, in order for them to do it by themselves. Okay. And then the first flight is going to be engine start, taxi, how to drive the airplane, okay. taxi, we're gonna run the engine up. So we're gonna go to a run-up area. We're gonna run uh, the airplane up to make sure that the engine is fine. If that's okay, we're gonna take off and we're gonna go fly. And the things that we're gonna do in flight is the four fundamentals. Straight and level flight, uh, descents, climbs, and banks. And that's it. And that's like the first uh, couple of lessons, at least. Okay, and in your experience, how was the diversity with student in terms of like the learning curve? Because I remember when I first started my training, that's one of the things I was told that, listen, everybody's not gonna learn yes. the same way. Yes. So how would you, because again, if the program is promising that in a nine months period, we want to get you out of here, but then again, everybody learns. Differently, differently. so let me just say this, okay. that students that come from a background of doing sim simulating or right. simulator games right. those are always my best students hands really? down <laughs> hands you down heard that guys yes. okay but okay so um, case in that. point i have two students out of hundreds of students two students that landed the airplane on their first lesson and that was from flying sims as kids and as adults okay yes it's two right. students only two students to do that okay and you in your experience also you believe that normally or on average students should be able to get through to commercial stage in, in nine months at least with the, the programs yeah you know some people take more time some people take less time okay. but for an average student um, if they came every day yeah, we could do it in nine months. Yeah, okay, that, that awesome. would be no problem for the average student. Okay, awesome. Now, let me, let me give you the extremes, all right? So, I've trained people from zero hours to private pilot in under 30 days. Wow. Under 30 days, that is one extreme. And I've trained people who just quit. <laughs> so, those are two that, extremes. That, that those are the two extremes. So this stick is like a joystick on a, on a PlayStation or on a Xbox or like the little joystick on your mirror for your rear view mirror on your car. All right, so what I've noticed with this airplane is when I get a first time student, they already know how to fly the airplane because they know to go down, you push forward, to come up and then left and right. So. Uh, my experience with this airplane is that the students already know how to fly these things because it's not a, a, a yoke because when you have a yoke people are trying to drive it like a car and it doesn't really it kind of works that way but then it doesn't 
on, on the first lesson, I wouldn't really introduce the students uh, on how these things work. I would point out some things like altitude and maybe heading and maybe the horizon that the airplane is on and relate that to the outside horizon and that's about it. This is a, 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 a Garmin uh, flight display. Um, this is what the airplane is doing as far as banking, altitude, headings um, and on this screen we have a runway diagram and I can use this cursor here to change the uh, uh, the picture of uh, the screen. So that is what we call a chart and I can zoom down and this is us at Torrance Airport and it's also touch screen just like the phone and this is for flight planning this gives us our weather this is for terrain red means that we're really close to the terrain <laughs> and we are uh, this is for traffic. We're able to see traffic on this screen, and this is the the uh, aircraft uh, engine, and the engine's not on now, um, but it gives us pressure, temperature, fuel, and all of that. And then we have two of these screens. This is more intuitive than all the steam gauges because the steam gauges don't necessarily give you a picture, but you can use the steam gauges to get a picture in your head of what the airplane is doing. This literally gives you a picture of what the airplane is doing.